Welcome back. Sorry to have to do this one, but it was one I was intending doing, but hadn't intended doing just yet. So watch on, see what, see what you get from it. And for your entertainment, you can see a big screen version at the end. You'll find out in the video. This is a video that I'm really quite disappointed to have to do. I was going to do one eventually, but I didn't know it was going to be because of the reason I'm going to do this one. This is an Orski S900 dash cam. And we're going to have a look at the specifications and you can see they're quite good on here. They're uh, 1920 by 1080, 1440, variable, all that sort of thing. So this is a dual view. <laughs> so this is a dual view dash cam. Try and say that when you've had a couple. Or in my case, try and say it when you haven't. It's quite a nice looking box. The specifications for it are quite high. Let's have a look and see, see it. This is literally the first time I've opened the box properly. Uh, the packet that it came in, obviously. But this is as far as I've got. Uh, let's have a look what that is. Don't know. Not like that. Right, so. What we have in the box is a USB lead, so cigarette lighter lead with USB in it. There you go. A 32 gigabyte disk, SD card, whatever you want to call it. That appears to be windscreen mount and that now that is the rear camera and associated leads i guess because um, supposedly you can use this as a reversing camera there you go wash key and you've got a book and in this book we got Lots of words. I will read those and tell you what they say later. It's just uh, itemising what's there. And things. So, don't know is a simple answer. Now, I also bought. So I will, I will sort that out and get back to you on that one. I also bought, to go with this, a wiring kit. Now looking at that, maybe I didn't need to, but I think it's the difference between doing it quickly and doing it properly. So let's have a look and see what's in here. You can see where I got it from. And I'll tell you a little story as to why. We were driving along t'other day in a car, which is the best way to do it. And on a in the middle of the day, on a deserted road other than us, and on a deserted road other than us and the person who's going to be involved in this, we're driving along quite happily, slow down, go to turn get into a parking space this person comes screaming up from behind drives straight into the front of the car as we start to turn now the problem is we haven't got any witnesses and he is saying that we did something in front of him which well, isn't actually the case but you know it's going to be an argument so I'm not having that ever again I've decided to buy a dash cam because if we had a dash cam, we could tell people what's going on. Now this says Orski Hardwire Kit. Product name Orski Dash Cam Hardwire Kit, model number 52 or S2. Input voltage 12 to 24 volts, output voltage 5 volts, output current 3 amps, cable length 10 foot or 3.2 meters, connector mini USB. So that'd be right then it is mini USB, made in China. 
low voltage protection, 11.6 volts for 12 volt vehicle and 23.6 volts for 24 volt vehicle. Now what I believe this does, and I will check it out and show you, is that this actually allows you to wire it into the system of the van, car, truck, motorcycle, whatever, whatever you're going to use it on anyway, because this isn't specific to horse key as such. You can use it on other makes as well. And if you've got the camera left so that it's recording so that you can cover yourself for parking, that sort of thing, if the battery starts to get low, it will shut the camera off before it drains the battery totally. So if you go on holiday, when you get back to your long stay car park, the car should start. It may have a few dents in it, but you'll know that they happened in the tail end of your holiday, not the beginning, probably, because if you haven't got a recording of them, it was after the thing shut down. Anyway, so that's that. Right, I'm going to... This looks interesting. That is the front camera, and that's the screen. It looks rather nice, actually. It's supposedly a wide angle. It says um, FNO 1.8, FO 170 degrees, 1080p, super night vision. So that's rather nice. Let's see if it get to find out whether it actually is what it says. And yeah, I'll go through the other bits, find out what's what. So anyway, that's the that's what we're doing, and we'll, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so now I've read the book and I know what I'm doing. <laughs> well, that's the theory. Anyway. All right, so that definitely is the back stuff. That's the camera and the leads when the red lead goes to your reversing light, so you can use it as a reversing camera. So that's a good idea. That is definitely just a charger thing. Now it's got batteries in it, but the batteries are only good for one to two, no, three to five minutes, it says, which is so that when you switch the thing off, well, I guess if you're in an accident where the power would get disconnected, it'll record for three to five minutes before it stops. And that's the sucker bracket. So it's pr quite important, they say, to make sure that you wire it up properly. But it's a very quick installation if you just do it simply. One of the biggest problems is going to be finding the location for the rear camera because theoretically it's just a case of sticking on the back windscreen. But if you want to use it for reversing and things, you know, they suggest you have it outside, nice clear image. Anyway, We've got a Renault, well, it's my daughter's car, we're going to put it on in the first instance. It's a Renault, so we'll see how that goes. And they, they do say charge it up for a couple of hours before you actually try and use it. Now, they do supply that, which is just a USB lead for powering up from a normal phone adapter. So that's okay. I'm going to use that. So the first thing I'm going to do now is put in the TF card. And uh, the slot is there. See it there? That's where the, where the TF card goes. So we we'll go for that and see where we go from there. I'm not sure what's occurring because it says it needs charging, but I haven't had the opportunity yet. So I'll put the card in and then I'll try and charge it. The instructions are quite comprehensive in terms of they cover virtually everything, but they're quite long-winded so I've got the TF card and it specifically says in the instructions brass contacts to the back and put it in that way in fact you can see on here the instructions there's the image so it says put it in that way which I'm about to which I was about to do They go on to say about if you don't put it in properly, you will it will drop out and damage either it or the reader. It also suggests that you use something like an edge of a credit card or something to make it sure it clicks in. Uh, if you use your nail, 
makes a definite click. So theoretically that now will work. It's not a touch button, it's a real button. Nothing happened, so try again. One, two, three. So the instructions, it may take a while to come on. Now it does also say that it might well be flat. So I'm going to connect it to a USB connector. Well, I plugged it in and it's come on and it's now gone straight into record mode, which is what they said it would do. So I'm going to have to push OK to stop it, wherever OK is. Right. So it's now stopped it. Well, at least it sort of worked. I'll leave it for a few minutes and then I'll see what I can do with it. Next I'm going to have a look at the suction cup thing, which is, uh, looks okay. Uh, okay, the suction cup has got a film which needs to be removed before it's stuck on the window. That's that high hiss, yeah, sticky ooh, so feel to it. And it's got a tab so you can pull it off. And presumably that's the, yeah, it's got lock and unlock symbols on the actual thing itself. There you go. Which is useful. That's the lock position. It's pulled it back. And there's the unlock position. It's made it loose. Very nice. Feels reasonable quality. At least at this point anyway. This is interesting. This is the car charger, as they call it. It's got a very long lead. And it says on there, input 8 to 36 volts, output 5 volts at 3.5 amps. So that's all right. So after that, I had to go and fit it to the car, which I did do, and I'll tell you what went on. If all you're after is a, just a front-facing dash cam, you just plug it in and that's it. If you want the rear-facing dash cam, you just have to run the cable around to the rear ca camera and plug it in and that's it. Here you can see the dual display. If you want to use it as a reversing camera, you have to put the red wire onto your rear light, see your reversing lights, and then it will switch it in. And it's got a little image so you can calibrate to it. It even provides its own lights. The SD cards, well, they failed within two days. However, the replacements I bought, which you have to buy yourself, they have worked beautifully for the rest of the time. The instructions are overly fiddly. There's too many words, but they're not that difficult if you read them a couple of times. Would I buy another one? Well, I did buy two in the first place, and I have got another car I'm going to fit one to, so yes. You've already seen it once, but I'll show again in full size. The driver of the other car claimed that we pulled out of a parking space in front of him and that's why he crashed into the front of our car as you can see he wasn't telling the truth but we had no witnesses but luckily we had this bit of video from a building which actually was the one we were going to visit and they had two cameras looking at it so we got both views and you can see what you think The good news is we showed the insurance company that video and we got a 100% payout. I hope you enjoyed that and if you'd like to pop on the subscribe button or on the notification and the like, that'd be great. And uh, there's some more videos coming up and we'll catch you another time. Cheers, bye bye.